from the campus studios of Sarland University, this is Ropecast, a lighthearted podcast for learners of English, with Roger Charlton and Peter Tisha. Hi listeners, we're back from a classroom on the campus of Sarland University with another episode of Ropecast, and we are back with a podcast on the backstop. That's right. Which is a huge issue in the Brexit talks. That's it, yes. And I don't get it. No. And if we were right to, back to the beginning, the referendum in 2016, and we, we did a couple of podcasts right back then, and we already predicted that the Irish border was going to be one of the big problems in negotiations. Because and it's that, the only land border that Britain has. That's it. So once Britain leaves the EU, the border between Northern Ireland, part of the UK, and the rest of Ireland, the Republic, will become an external border of the European Union. Mm -hmm. So like, you know, in the, in, in the east of Europe or in the south of Europe where... I was reminded a little bit of, you know, East and West Germany <laughs> in that talk because, yeah. you know, you had sort of families sitting on each side of the border. Yeah. So putting in a border right through Ireland with um, controls and everything, that is a problem, isn't it? Well, of course, um, if we look at recent Irish history, I mean, in the last century, then there was about a 30-year period of high levels of violence. Three and a half thousand people were killed. I don't know how many were injured, some of them with life-changing injuries because of the disagreement about the future of Ireland. So there is a, a historical problem here. And there is an Irish border. The border is there. But if you make one of the smaller border crossings, you wouldn't know. Like between Germany and France. Like always, when I get on my bike here and go from Germany into France, unless I knew where the border was, I wouldn't, I wouldn't discover it. Yeah. There's just no sign. Okay, I get the problem. If there's a border in there that with, has controls and everything, mm. that will be a problem for mm. everybody. But what has this to do with what's called a backstop? I don't know. Yeah. Um, we have to remember that on the 29th of March 2019, Britain will leave the EU. This is already agreed. That begins a period which is usually referred to as the transition period, mm -hmm. when Britain and the other European countries can negotiate a new free trade agreement or some kind of new trading relationship. And in order to prevent sudden changes to commerce, industry, etc., there has to be a gradual transition. Once that transition period comes to an end, on December the 31st, 2020, mm -hmm. if there is not yet an agreement between the UK and the EU, the other EU countries wanted a guarantee that there would be no so-called hard border through Ireland. Which we were talking about yeah. just now, a so hard this border. So this extra agreement, what happens if there is no big agreement, is referred to as the backstop. So the intention okay. is, we don't need this because we've got a transition period which should be long enough to come up with something new. Mm -hmm. But if that fails, or if it needs more time, this is a kind of guarantee, especially for the a Irish... safety. Government. Yeah, a safety net. You a could safety call it. net, yeah. 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 Okay. So there wouldn't suddenly be what is called a hard border through Ireland. Because it's a very artificial border. It's on the ground. You know, it's not like it follows rivers or mountains or anything like that. It's, you see no logical basis for this border. And why are some British politicians so against this safety net? Well, one of, one of the things that has complicated the, the negotiations is that since the last election, the Conservative Party cannot rule alone in the, in the, uh, as a government. They need support to get a majority. And the party they came to an arrangement with is called the Democratic Unionist Party. It is a party of Northern Ireland mm -hmm. which wants to maintain the union. In other words, wants to remain part of the UK. Many the smaller group in Northern Ireland might wish to join the Republic and form a single united Ireland. So this is a, a really big agreement that would have to be reached within Ireland and is not very likely at present. Right. So this fact that the DUP, 
are able to wield a lot of power has made it very difficult for Theresa May to negotiate. Okay, so there's a lot of discussion about whether to include this backstop at all, or... The EU insists on it, mm -hmm. and there are people in Britain who think, no, we don't want this to be um, infinite. We want a final date for this so-called backstop. So what they're saying is, with too much of a backstop, um, this would almost be like remaining in e the EU exactly. yeah. with, and even without the advantages. That's it. So the, the, the very strong... It does make sense a little bit. Yeah, the, the strong Brexiters are talking about Britain becoming a vassal state, uh -huh. you know, a state which has no... Um, no rights. No rights, uh -huh. is not involved in decision-making, but nevertheless has to follow the rules. Uh-huh, okay, okay. Brexiters or Brexiteers, as yeah. they're sometimes I think yeah. called, are the people in favor of... Leaving the EU. Leaving the EU. One last question before we stop. We've, all, we've already gone over time already. Um, what will happen if the vote on the so-called withdrawal agreement fails, means it will not be adopted? What will happen then? Nobody knows at the moment. Uh -huh. If this doesn't go through Parliament, the House of Commons and the House of Lords, in other words, if Parliament rejects this deal that Theresa May, May and her colleagues have negotiated, nobody knows what will happen next. Theoretically, it could mean Britain leaves on the 29th of March with no agreement at all, which is often referred to as the cliff edge. Britain goes off the edge of a cliff. And, and falls into the sea and drowns. Yeah, that's the sort of image that's often okay. used here. Is that also called the hard Brexit then? Or, or is that the Well, that is the most extreme form of hard Brexit, yes. The, ah, okay. Yeah, yeah. okay. I okay. mean, the degrees of hardness and softness. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in this case, you would fall into the water, but yeah. <laughs> you'd yeah. drown anyway. <laughs> and um, um, currently, apparently, our British government is making plans in case this happens, including, and this is worrying for some people, They're putting three and a half thousand troops on standby in case they're needed to help out with emergencies. Well, yeah. okay. I think we'll just leave it at that. These are pretty bleak prospects, actually. But I hope we've helped our listeners to understand the Brexit discussion a and we little bit better. It has helped me. So thank you, okay. Roger. And I have to say, a lot of people in Britain are still optimistic. Okay, that's a good thing. <laughs> on an optimistic note, we'll leave you... Bye-bye, dear listeners. Bye. You've been listening to Ropecast, brought to you by Saarland University, featuring Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Tune in for the next edifying episode on your podcast dial.